Hey again, it's Chrissy here with part two of the consumer awareness brief as a part of the return and reunion curriculum. So we just finished up talking about how to know if you have been the victim of identity theft. I wanted to say that some of the other really obvious examples are if you see a line on your debit statement or your credit card statement for a purchase that you never bought. Um, people that will sell your identity or people that will try and buy for you will sometimes put a very minute charge just to see if it will get caught. So for example, just a 7-Eleven purchase for like $6.25. Something that you're like, mm, did I go to 7-Eleven? I do go to 7-Eleven, but did I buy anything on that day? I can't remember. So checking your bank statements and your credit statements regularly, you'll be more likely to catch that. Um, and then you will need to report that to the credit card company or to your bank to let them know that you've seen a fraudulent charge and that we, you would like to then be reissued a new um, debit card or a new credit card. So many times they'll start with those really small charges that just kind of confuse you and then later um, they'll try to push through a bigger purchase or put a bunch of purchase purchases together on one day. So one of the ways that you can also protect yourself is by um, setting up a credit freeze. So you need to think about setting up a credit freeze with all three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So the credit freeze can either be from now till the end of time, or you can set it up for a period of time. You will need to remove it before you go forward to purchase something with your credit. So even so small as opening a, up a phone contract or um, thinking about buying a car or anything like that. Um, I actually even had to pull my credit freezes off to uh, when our contract changed from one company to another company. Um, so you will have to pull them, but you can pull them for a short period of time. So you can say, hey, we're gonna run it um, this week or even the within the next two days and you can just pull it for those two days. But credit freezes are really a good idea for deployment and for um, your subsequent deployments. Because I would assume during that time, um, you won't be buying a vehicle. Um, most of the time you may or may not be buying a car. Um, and so if you have a credit freeze up and someone tries to purchase um, credit through your name and the credit freeze is there, they will not be able to do it without contacting you first. All right, so that's nice to know as well. All right. So what are some ways that you can protect your identity? So some of the ways that you can protect your identity are through using antivirus and anti-spyware and a firewall on your computer. You want to avoid public Wi-Fi for um, purchasing items or doing anything with that would show your credit card information or your bank information over public Wi-Fi. You'll want to do that on a pub, on a protected Wi-Fi within your home. Um, you want to back up any kind of important files securely. So it can be very convenient on your personal device to have a lot of a very um, convenient information like bank and um, maybe birth certificates and social security cards, but consider too what might happen if somebody were to steal this device and what they could get into. So back up, back up, back up. Make sure there is a bunch of ways that they can, um, that they would need to come over to find any of that information. Um, you want to also lock and password protect all of your devices, your laptop, your cell phone, um, any kind of other smart mobile device um, and make sure those passwords are very strong, okay? And that you change them regularly. Um, I actually read, this is kind of scary, but sometimes you'll see on social media where they'll say, ask some questions, for example, um, like find out what kind of cat you are. And so you put in something like, oh, I was born in February and my favorite color is blue and uh, my parents were married in Texas. And that kind of stuff is also the questions that might be your security questions. So think that you have also given them access to some things that might be some of your backup and protection. So online quizzes, just take that into account. Um, I also like to remind people 
uh, that if you are going to purchase something through a website one time only, probably you don't need to set up an account on that website. That's just another way for people to gain access to your credit card, your home address, your phone sometimes, um, and other purchase information about you. And then the other thing that we're, we can sometimes get really lax about is I want to go and check out something on this website and they're asking, do you want to sign in through this other account that I have, like a Google account or a Facebook account or a other social media that I might use? And that will give them all of the information, that company and that organization will have all of the information from your social media and social media will have all of the information you put through on that company. So that's just another way that um, organizations really try and use you and the information about you to market to you. And then that can is more likely to get hacked and sold to someone else that you might not want to know that much about you. So consider not linking accounts and then also consider um, not setting up an account if you can check out as a guest and if it's a website you don't use regularly. Okay, just an idea. All right, so we want to talk a little bit more. We talked about how to protect your information online and identity theft and fraud and how to deter fraud. Let's talk a little bit about predatory lending right now. Okay, uh, predatory lending this could be any lending that has extremely high interest rates and then maybe has short payback terms. So you as active duty service members are not allowed to go to predatory lending sites and predatory lending buildings like payday loans or any of those other organizations that would charge you a very high interest rate. You are not allowed to go there, okay? So learn how to identify payday lenders. We're looking at places that have like a payday loan that has a 25% interest that is way too high. Way, 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 way too high. So we wanna look at um, identifying that and avoiding it. Unfortunately, these kind of predatory lending, it is unethical, but it is not illegal. So that's the other thing we have to remember too. Um, why do these organizations use the military as a target? One, they know that you have a steady paycheck. They know that you have payments and allotments. They'll know that you have ways to avoid financial problems and how to fix them quickly through our organization, through Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, through those other organizations like Support the Enlisted Project. Um, they'll know that you are young and you have less consumer experience. Yeah. Um, that it's easy for debt collectors to track you because you work for the government. Um, that you can be identified even in your civilian clothes. They'll see that Navy haircut. They'll say something like, oh, we offer a military discount. Let me just see your military ID. Even so much as that, they'll see what rank you are. They can know how much is coming to you each month. They'll know that you're paid on the 1st and the 15th every month. They'll, they can generally figure out what you're having come in for BAH. And that information is useful to predatory lenders and to people that will try and use you for fraud. And they'll know that deployed service members, once they come back, want to purchase big ticket items. So unfortunately, a big banner that says, welcome home, uh, we support the military, um, big American flag signs outside. This is something that you want to also be aware of. So using, using those military terms in their title doesn't always mean that they are predatory, but it is a sign that that might be a predatory lender. Okay. So some of the other, uh, things other than payday loans, cause I talked a lot about that. We're also talking about auto title loans. Um, refund anticipation loans, rent to own. So rent to own furniture, you're thinking. I've also even heard, we hear crazy stuff at Fleet and Family, but at Fleet and Family, we actually had a um, service member who was rent to owning a car part. It's really unfortunate, but we don't need to do that, okay? Come to us, we'll find another option for you. Pawn shops, um, adjustable rate or interest only mortgages. Adjustable rate mortgages are scary stuff, so let's not do that. Subprime lending, annuities, investments, or retirement plans, okay? 
you have retirement plans, you have other insurance options. So uh, don't use those if you don't have to. Okay, I'll see you back for part three.